Welcome to Now Try This, the podcast where two best friends get together every week to try something new. I'm Marcus. Oh, and I'm Nick. You yeah. usually give me a segue. You usually call me sexy I do. or hot or I do. smart wait, or wait, 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 wait. Do another big of, cocked. Show me your buttons. How many buttons you got going down? One more. Oh, and our sexy hairy beast over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nicholas. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the show. This is now try this. We challenge each other every week. And we this week is no different. Marcus has challenged me this week to watch the black comedy martial arts film the art of self-defense coming out in 2019 now before we get <laughs> to called, that guys you called it a martial arts film and that i was like what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> did you not see the film i did i did see the film but i just it's such a wild film that like martial arts as part of its genre did not even like cross my mind in any way whatsoever. It's the Wikipedia. That's what it says. It says it's a martial art film. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't. Uh, I guess apparently there. all you need to do to be a martial arts film is have karate in it. Uh, we'll talk so. about it. But before we do that, guys, thank you so much for listening. You can get find us everywhere at Now Try This Cast. You join our Patreon at patreoncom slash Now Try This Cast, where every month you guys decide what our try is like. Next month for February, you guys submitted your submissions in at the five dollar tier. Then everyone at the dollar tier voted, and you guys voted for oh, thank goodness, the Legend of Vox Machina, Critical Role's new Amazon Prime show. So, next week, thank you, Radama Boss, for subscribing. Thank you for joining us. Now, next month, we are a little off schedule, so instead of recording live on Thursday, we mm-hmm. will be recording Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on twitch.tv slash now try this cast. But we're going to be doing the first three episodes of the new Critical role animated Woo! show critical Marcus, are you role excited? i am excited i posted something online because that was the first episode we ever did of the podcast you made me watch critical yeah, role i did i did full circle moment i fucking mm-hmm. love it mm-hmm. and we're nearing 50 episodes for this run around too for second season yeah we're uh we're doing really good i'm really excited i yeah big kick their kickstarter so i've already watched it so i am uh stoked to talk about it next week that's but that's good. not what we're here to do now guys if you want to support the patreon support the show patreon.com slash not sure this cast join the community mm-hmm. and if you can't do that go ahead and go to spotify or itunes and leave us five stars leave a review it's super helpful it's super worthwhile marcus what the fuck's going on in your life dude have oh you tried yeah anything new? have i tried anything new nick i went to go see hades town for my birthday <gasps> my wonderful what? girlfriend uh took me to go see hades town and oh, how was it it was what fun it was good it was a good show it was really really fun interesting i don't want to give away anything because i know you're going to go see it soon too so i'm seeing it on friday mm-hmm. no thursday no next week thursday that's why we're not recording <laughs> <laughs> i'm so. taking my partner's mother i'm taking the in-law nice just you and her uh yeah wow that's brave yeah lexi asked me if i could buy her a ticket and i said no buy your own goddamn ticket <laughs> she's expensive <laughs> I'm taking uh-huh. your mom's. Uh huh. No, there the three of go. us are going. It's gonna be really sweet. Uh, really okay, good. okay, okay. <laughs> I thought you were just taking the the mother in law. I was like, that's fantastic. No, no, I got her for a Secret Santa, and I was really, really anxious mm-hmm. about what to get her. And I thought a uh, Broadway show would be the way to go. Yeah, that's nice. Also, yeah. very impressive. Honestly, it fucking worked. It was gangbusters. Let me tell you. <laughs> Listen, me and her, we've been getting along. It's been going better. But I got her oh. a ticket, and she fucking cried. And I was like, I'm in. Yeah, Win. yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Nick. What about you? Have you tried anything new, dude? I, I I feel like you were way more low key than I was. I have two things to talk about. First is that you guys can check out my guesting on the Conquest of Bliss podcast. Oh my god. It's their season three, episode three. It says now try this with Nick Nieves. You guys can go check me out. And uh Rotanum Boss on. just gifted 50 subs. Do you know who that is? Uh I've re- I feel like they came in the chat before, and I don't remember who they were. I don't know what to say. That's amazing. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. You are now our number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry if you thought this was like Ludwig's channel or like yeah, this no. was critical. This is just the two of I, us <laughs> and you've just gifted everybody almost all the followers we have a tier one sub. 100%. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's incredible. That's amazing. And we are obviously speechless. <laughs> we were just talking about wow. how, <laughs> how bad we feel. 
<laughs> uh, hey, Fully Cooly Crim, congrats on getting that gifted sub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congrats on what everyone who's a do we get, sub. Oh, hold on, hold on. I've always wanted to do this. Oh, wait, do sure. we got any Dodgers in the chat? Any Dodgers? What's any a Dodger? Dodger? That means That means people who didn't get the gift when it was like a big uh, gift. Like you dodged <laughs> the gift. Wow, I'm a little speechless. Uh, 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 so I went to... Guys, Conquest of Bliss. Conquest of Bliss was our friends of the podcast. I went there. Marcus, I'm very excited for you to listen to this episode you haven't yet because it just mm-hmm. came out. Basically, the whole premise of the show is mental health. And they she talked to me about what this show has done for me mentally, about trying new things, about getting outside of my comfort zone, and about our partnership. So I'm really excited for you to check that out. I think everyone should as well. That's amazing. And the other thing I tried that was new was I am one of the luckiest partners in the world because my partner took me for Christmas to see six, which I saw on Wednesday. Marcus, I mentioned the other day when we played D&D that mm-hmm. I saw it, but let me tell you a little bit more. It was so phenomenal. I Have you listened to six? I have a question, Nick. Uh, okay. What six? Six what? <laughs> the Broadway musical Six, which is about the six ex-wives uh, of Henry the yes. Eighth, and uh, you know uh, mm-hmm. Kate Howard, Anne Boleyn, yada yada yada, uh-huh. all of them. And it is a phenomenal show. And the whole premise is these six ladies are iconed after pop divas: Beyonce, Ariana Grande, Britney Spears, Adele. And you really feel that influence. So the music is super modern and like mm-hmm. punchy and hip and hip hop, but mixed with a little bit of Broadway, a la Hamilton or something like that. But the they let these six women who are the whole show just these six women on stage yeah really encapsulate being these pop divas the whole show is structured like a concert there's no there is a story but they're not like acting out scenes you are at yeah. their concert and it was phenomenal the the main girl sorry the first girl was supposed to be iconed after beyonce i got beyonce vibes man in person really? it was so she was so good from every little ha ha who ah, ah, it was phenomenal and then my favorite person was britney mack who does the get down song get down doo, 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 doo. and she is one of my newest favorite broadway stars uh but everyone who should see that show should definitely do it it was Hell a great yeah. It was a perfect way to go back to Broadway. Mm-hmm. Was Hades Town good? Hades Town was incredible. It was so much yeah. fun. I mean, I've seen a couple of shows since Broadway has reopened, and I'm just I'm really excited about going to see more. But Hades Town was a lot of fun. Hell yeah! All right, so Marcus, I feel the like, arts of self defense, doing karate. I feel like we, oh yeah! I feel like we need to get to the reason we're here, especially because we got fifty gifted and. It makes me think that we should uh, do what we're supposed you know what, to Nick? do today. You, I feel like before the episode started, I'm appeal, you know, peek, peek behind the curtain. You were being like such a whiny little bitch about this episode and how you don't want to do it. But let it let the record show. This is the episode that got us 50 <laughs> gifted subs. OK. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, Marcus, so far, you're about to get our a, greatest. You're episode. about to get a strongly worded email in our inbox about they want that that their money back oh, no. because of the episode they're about to get <laughs> marcus you have given me the the jesse eisenberg vehicle <laughs> the art of self-defense why <laughs> what is what is this movie where did it come from why did you give it to me please go nick i had no idea what this movie <laughs> was that. The person just said, yeah, Nick likes to whine. Love you, Nick. Okay, they said they love me. Do I know who this is? I think you do know who this is. Is is this James? No, this isn't James. Is Who's the Rotenum boss? I remember from before. Maybe. I don't remember usernames. I don't know. Name yourself in the chat. How do you so know, Nick? You. Yeah, name yourself in the chat. Oh, it's James. I hey, remember it was James. You did. You're a better <laughs> podcast host than me. I'm a better friend to James. James, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like you would be better friends no. with him. You guys have a lot in common. I feel like you guys would really hit no. it off. You just kind of Stop. Like hung out. Stop being Pepsi. Uh, no, I'll see myself out. I'll oh, see myself okay. out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marcus, James. You're the best. Please tell me why the art of self-defense. Okay, Nick, I watched this movie. It was so unassuming. It was just random little film. I was like, okay, I heard like this movie is crazy and I need to watch it. But like the reviews weren't like amazing. It wasn't everywhere. Even when it came out, 
I saw some advertisements for it and then it just disappeared off the face of the planet. And I had no idea what it was. And so I feel I, the same way. I do want to interrupt you. Just say yeah. I was in the same boat. It was coming out. There were little ads. It seemed weird. And I like just missed it. Yeah. Weird indie darling. Just same. Missed exactly. It. Yeah. And so then I was like, okay, whatever. So South it, by Southwest, it premiered. It came out again or it came up again somewhere. And I was like, you know what? This seems weird. And I'm very much in the mood for a weird movie. So I put it on and man like every single shot of this movie i was like in it i was just appreciating the film for what it was it spoke to me in like a weird way and i just i couldn't get enough of it and so i watched it and i was like man i needed to sit with it for like a little bit and i just i don't know i kept thinking about it i kept telling people about it i was telling people to watch it all the time after i saw it and so I knew I had to give it to you. And I watched it like in 20 uh, towards the end of 2021 or something like that, if I remember correctly. And I've been wanting to give it to you ever since, but there hasn't been a good time. And so now I figured I would give it to you. And I don't know if people remember we're here for the last podcast episode. The reason I got it was because the chat decided that Marcus should give me something I would hate instead of something that changed his life. Yep. And I am upset about it because that would have been an anime. That would have been a great that would have been a great episode to get 50 gifted subs on. Oh, 100 percent. I would have <laughs> definitely cried during that episode a hundred percent if we did the other challenge but we're doing this challenge and i'm like ain't no tears coming out of these eyes baby oh my goodness i'm sorry you didn't cry because i cried about how awful this film was shut okay. up it was so, fantastic i will fight so, you on it <laughs> so oh, it was even better the second time man can i tell you <sighs> that when i was watching this movie going into it knowing exactly how weird it was going to be or what was going to happen i fucking I loved it more. I appreciated it more. I appreciated all the shots. I appreciated that like every beat of the movie is pushing something forward. Character development, character, you know, like story. It's pushing a, a, towards a joke or showing you something that's going to be relevant later. Yeah, I really love when my movies push towards jokes and never get to them. That is my what favorite. Is, I thing. was laughing so the whole time. So, oh my god, so, you're crazy. So this movie, directed and written by Riley Stearns, uh -huh. who has also directed Faults. That's all I know about him. Because I just I don't know what else. <laughs> that's I don't know. That's all, that's worked it. as a writer for Cartoon Network on some random shows. Uh he's been, he's been in the biz, but this is his biggest film. I, yeah, I think it's safe to say. So this movie starts. Oh my god, it's fucking oh uh this movie You're this movie so starts defeated with with us meeting Casey, okay, who yeah. is Jesse Eisenberg. And he is timid, awkward accountant mm -hmm. who is living his life and he lives it poorly. And then he gets jumped by a motorcycle game. Yeah, he has to get his dog dog food. So he leaves his house late at night and ends up being assaulted by a motorcycle gang. But in the most sort of like Wes Anderson comedic pacing ever, where it's just like, oh, it they, is almost like Wes Anderson. They come up and they're like, do you have a gun on you? And he's like, and no, he says, what? What? No. And then he they leave. I don't think he said no. I think he was just like, what? Oh, yeah. He's like, what? And then they leave and they come back and they rob him. Uh, fully cooling the chest says this film is great. Loved it when they saw it in theaters. Wow. Oh, you God. were ahead of the curve. You knew I'm, that it was good when you went to go see it in theaters. I waited until 2021. I'm surrounded by idiots. Uh, I will say that the popcorn priest podcast let us know it was a. they thought it was a great movie, too. The dialogue was great and the ending is aggressive. Uh, mm -hmm. So shout out to them. They also did this episode. Oh, nice. First. 54th episode uh, but before that before out, this but... mugging it even starts before that and it just to really like drive home how pathetic the main character is also shout out to movie pass oh yeah fully cool he just says they saw this because movie pass yo i i let you in on a secret i was movie passing before movie pass was cool before movie pass was ten dollars a month it i can was confirm. fifty dollars a month there wasn't an app and there was a credit card and it, it was it was a whole fucking i uh i miss it you I were you were at fifty dollars a month and you were doing it and you were telling me about it every single time you went to go see a movie and I was like I'm Nick I'm not paying fifty dollars a month and it became ten dollars a month or whatever it was and I was like yeah, yeah me too I have movie pass now also and the bubble and the bubble burst the bubble burst but I was making it worth that fifty bucks a month I was seeing at least two movies a week that's true at least and well because my job was next to four of them mm -hmm. it was next to a landmark a city cinema an AMC and a Regal so yeah. it was by Union Square so I just oh fully coolie was on the trend too yo fully coolie we are so cool yeah
What's yeah, up? I guess Yo, let's so. share our movie pass tickets sometime. Okay. <laughs> the coolest part about it was you still got your regal points. Oh, so I got, that's like, true. You, I got, you get like, free like shit. I got like this kind of shit. Like oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. and vinyl. That's so funny. My movie pass regal points. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Anyway, so this movie actually starts off with Jesse Eisenberg, our, our French couple going into the talk, coffee shop, talking French to each other, and then making fun of Jesse Eisenberg, who's sitting by himself. And then the, the next shot, and they're talking about him in French, and you are to assume as a viewer, he probably doesn't know what they're talking about. I'll and, be honest, I forgot about this moment. I did love this moment. It was very <laughs> like, it was very, it was so sad. It was so <laughs> sad. It was so sad. But also, something while being something funny. about French people insulting you is makes it worse. Uh-huh, 100%. And so I then, don't know why. So then it cuts to him in his car, and it shows that he is learning French, and he knows well, it, was a, it was a good gag. French. Good. It was joke. a good. It was that that part of that pacing and that reveal was uh-huh. was good because I didn't think that was going to be the reveal. I thought the reveal was just for us, you know, that they were just making fun of him and only we were going to find out and we were mm-hmm. supposed to just feel bad for him. And then we also, I do want to mention that the dog food brand that he uses for his dog is called Dog Food. It was just there were other options of dog food right next to that dog. Yeah, there food. was like Puritan or per, what it Purina and all Purina, those. Yeah, were right yeah. There. but to specifically drive home the fact that he was this kind of person. His brand was just generic brown, brown bag, bag dog food. Dog food. I, I I feel like I need to talk about this now so I can enjoy this part of the, the, sure. the podcast and talking about it. And because I, I didn't dislike the whole movie, but I just need to know your take on it. I feel like maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're gonna correct me now, and I'm gonna feel super wrong, and I'm gonna have enjoyed this movie more. But okay, there was something about Jesse Eisenberg's performance, and I don't blame him. I feel yeah. like that's how the script was it, where it it was so tick ish that it felt almost insensitive to me. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, like to people on the spectrum and to <sighs> autism and to I, those things. Is is that just me? Am I being I, overly I, sensitive? Yeah, I think that's just you because I was watching hmm. this movie. And if if they didn't establish that everyone in this world was like that, then I would be like, okay, it's being it's being something's off about him. And you're like making fun of him specifically. But everyone in the world is like that. Everyone has that weird speech pattern that they don't have in other movies. I mean, I just watched Vivarium also that has like these two leads and they both talk with a specific cadence that is like unique to this film. Sure. So. That, I I didn't read it as that of him being like he on the was spectrum. More in any so, way. it was dialed up even more. Like he also had I, like I it, okay. So I think Jesse Eisenberg acts like this in every movie. Like this is the most Jesse Eisenberg he's bit. ever been. But he That's is true. shades of this in every film. I don't I don't see bit. that much of a difference between this and Lex Luthor in terms of like his acting. I guess in Vivarium he was that trying to act pretty normal, like a normal person. Yes. Like that and was even the point then, of that a little. Okay, all right. I would try. I, I I will say that it did give me pause and it did make me think. Yeah. And I wish it didn't even make me think about it. Like yeah. I don't know if it's uh, uh, maybe maybe it is just me being overly sensitive. Maybe they did need to dial it back a little bit maybe it was something maybe it's in between but i I do wanted to point it out because i i I would be i'd be remiss not to bring up like you know i agree it was it was a little it was a lot it was a lot but everyone in the film has the same exact cadence a little bit it was all the the audience members like talk like that they act weird they're all deadpan deadpan and dry and that's part of the like essence of the movie it's just jesse iceberg added his own special dry sauce because well, he wasn't the... function he wasn't fu- he wasn't like a functioning like he wasn't Person. doing well you yeah. know like i think i think just the uh, a timid and awkward person in this world with the speech pattern is reminiscent to someone on this spectrum. I agree. I, I, I agree. That. They, I, I don't think they were doing trying I to do anything. Everyone in this movie, I guess, to maybe be too insensitive, it seems like they're on the spectrum a little bit. Yeah, I, just it's the way it's, a it's very written, specific the dialogue. Kind of, it's know. it's so out of touch and semi absurdist that sometimes it loops back around to being realistic. But you just like something is off yeah. with everyone. You don't know what, and I think that's the vibe that I'm getting. A hundred percent. I think what you just said is sometimes that just loops around and gets a little too close. I mean, Wes yeah. Anderson movies are the same. Mm-hmm. I, I I forgot about that comparison, but you watch yeah. Moonrise Kingdom, and I love that film with those two kids. But mm-hmm. I'd be reminisced to not say that they, they speak in a way that could be deemed as insensitive to some people. You know? Yes, but but uh, I would okay. say I disagree. I think it's just like intentional okay. weirdness. Well, you you helped me um, make it more. I will Great. say that. Okay, that's good. So getting that out of the way, our dude gets beat up. My dude, my dude Jesse. Called he Casey. gets beat up. Feminine ass name gets be- gets beat up, and he just happens to pass by a dojo. <laughs> yep. I mean, it makes sense given what you find out later. <laughs> yeah, but like, 
he just happens to go i mean past- oh, okay you okay if you're gonna say that about any movie i mean any movie on the planet is just happens oh spider-man just happened to get bit by a radioactive spider thor just happened to be born in asgard like he just happened to be a god what to be a god? that was the worst that was the that worst was bad one, but the spider-man <laughs> one was stronger that one was yeah, true yeah. oh it was next to the gun store you know what Darren? oh that is true Wow. Maybe that was really on purpose. Yeah. Shit. Okay. I mean, you know what, very, Yeah. You guys you keep changing. You guys keep changing my mind about shit. I, <laughs> I, I honestly think by the end of this, you will decide that you liked I, it, but I, I don't so know much. about it. How your feelings as on we the go way there. there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you do know I hate coincidences, though. Like, uh, if there's too many of them, I do. Like, that's why I hate The Force Awakens. Like, it's only yeah. coincidence. But you, you didn't. Know? Yeah, that's true. But if they're too on the nose, I know you hate them. But this, you didn't even know this one until right now. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's true you're right you're right okay so he sees a dojo he sees him fighting he goes inside uh yes. and he meets imogen poots do have you do you know imogen poots from other stuff i know her from a movie that i definitely saw recently i don't remember she was you in, know her from stuff yeah yeah she was in bavaria and <laughs> so she funny. was in this she was in black christmas we saw that in theaters okay yes yeah, she was in black christmas Wow, she, she was, was in also twenty eight weeks later. V for Vendetta. She was in Green Room. That was her big, her big break. Oh, Green Room. Okay. Yeah, she's been in lots of stuff though, and I, I've liked her in a whole bunch of other stuff. She's in this one movie where there's No Way Down. Was the one No Way Down? Is No Way Down the suicide one? A Long Way Down. You mean A Long Way Down? I think you mean A Long Way Down. Right? Yeah, that's the one I know her from first. She goes up on a roof during New Year's Eve with yeah. the guy from Breaking Bad, Pierce Brosnan, and Tony Collette, and they're about to kill themselves, but they decide not to, and they're like, yeah. friends. that was a very. I liked it. Yeah. Did you guys saw it? You, you liked yeah, it? Yeah, we saw it. We saw it. It was good. Yeah, I liked it too. I've liked her since then. Mm-hmm. And I was really happy to see her in this. Though, it, again, the movie's so weird. I don't know if it like lets her shine as much as she can. I am but- glad you told me to watch Vivarium because I only saw her in this and or I only remembered her from this. And I was like, she's fine she acts weird though and then it was the same thing like you're kind of getting it earlier and then i watched her in something else i was like oh she's a good actress that was acting she was doing before it was good (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) and then that's that's we i mean we don't have to go step by step we can if you want to it's a weird movie but we can go close step by step because okay, I feel like just, so, there's, there are a lot of plot related elements to to talking about the movie that I feel like. Yeah. So basically, plot wise here, just to go, we'll do it in like chunks, right? Sure, so yeah, like yeah. he sees the dojo, dojo. He's like, I'm going to get I'm going to fucking get fucking karate manned up so I uh-huh. can uh, s- protect myself. Oh, oh no, no, no. Hold on. I'm sorry, because I am skipping over the gun scene. Him buying the gun. Oh, yeah. Was funny. It was, it was funny. It was a really good, funny scene. It was a commentary funny. on buying guns in America in yeah. general. It was good. It was very funny. Yeah. You can't buy a gun right now if you want to kill because in case you're angry, uh, you have to do two weeks. And then if you're still angry, you can kill them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the fact that he lists all the like, he's like, oh, you know, gun owners are high, like higher rate of suicides. And also if percentage. you are, he's given yeah, the percentage. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh, also, if you run into someone on the street and they try to rob you and you have have a gun you're more likely to die because they'll take your gun from you (laughs) you're like which is true which is true immediately it's like enjoy your new gun (laughs) yeah i think it's funny because i feel like if this was more biting it wouldn't have been funny but it's funny because because it's not trying to be biting it's being matter of fact it's like yeah you know this and it's true yeah i think by having everyone in the world be weird everything comes across as so normal to what is the reality of everyone in the movie Oh yeah, it's you're gonna, you're love, gonna love owning, owning a, gun. a gun. Yeah, <laughs> that was really good, Darren. So then he bought the gun. He sees the dojo. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna get fit." And then he goes in. He meets Anna, who's teaching. Wait, she's te- or this- no, 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 is she teaching the kids class now? No, that's later. That's the second half. He's just watching a class, mm-hmm. and and the sensei is talking. Fucking man. I, I, it's funny because the sensei is a, is a crazy dude. We could talk so much about him, okay, but yeah. here at the beginning, the way he's talking at, in the dojo, talking to these people about karate, mm-hmm. nothing seemed off about it to me at all. <laughs> but and I, I, I <laughs> here's the thing, man. I think that the karate guy is this, unfortunately, the most realistic character there is. Yeah. Like, talk yeah. about toxic masculinity. The fact yeah. that you can, like, you know there are people out there like this, right? I, I'm going to tell my a story really quick okay. that might be a little insensitive. I took karate. 
uh-huh. when I was young, 10. I did it for maybe a couple months. Sure. I was telling Lexi, I was like, I don't know why I stopped. And then I was like, oh, I probably very quietly stopped because my mom couldn't afford it anymore or something. Uh-huh. Is like, Fair enough. Is actually truly how things that usually happen. Yep. <laughs> but the guy who, one of the people that was in charge of it was a family friend who's oh. like in our community as somebody that everybody knows. But, and he was like, you know, a part of my childhood as a family mm-hmm. friend, uh, you know, uh, you know, big brother kind of typey guy. You know, he was my mother's yeah. age, but you know, like that kind of guy. But like lately, like he just got married to somebody, a girl that's my age. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, that's like 25 years his lesson. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, that tracks for you. I mean, uh, there's a certain personality of person. Nick, honestly, there's a modern version of this, like sweeping TikTok right now. Have you heard of Detroit Urban Survival Training? I'm scared to say yes or no. Well, no, Nick, I have. I've, you're oh, going to no. find out because that's part of Stop the game it. today. Stop it. Oh, my God. Hey, Nick here. Unfortunately, we had some tech issues during the game. We're going to get right back to the main review here, but if you would like to hear the game and all its screwed up goodness, it'll be at the end of this episode after the outro. Now, back to me and Marcus. But Nick, yes, yes. You took karate? Three months. Were the vibes the same? Not, I mean, yeah. you were in the kids section, but I'm assuming there was like... But they were, 100%. Isn't that weird? A little bit. The, the, yeah. the, the point that this movie has about like toxic masculinity and all that, it's just like really poignant. And it's surprisingly poignant, I guess. And it's really yeah. interesting that it is so realistic. We know people like this. And there is a guy trending right now, Detroit Urban Survival Training, who is exactly like this coach, minus the murders. Maybe we don't know for sure. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but like, I feel like Cobra Kai does this better. What is no? Oh my god, no! What are you talking about? Cobra Kai is all about toxic masculinity. But it's not, about it fun. It's not as funny as this. Are you still yes, watching Cobra that Kai? That one's actually yeah. Cobra Kai is actually fun. Are you watching Cobra Kai still? No, but I'm also okay, not gonna watch the okay, movie again. So. so there you go. Enough people are that there's four seasons of it, and enough people watch this movie that we got 50 subs on this. Oh episode. my man, my man, my man! I'm looking at the Wikipedia. Do you know what the box office is for this movie? Ten dollars. It was. It was. Guess how, guess actually, actually guess how much bus. it is. Guess actually how much it is. One point five million. Wow, that's so low. It's two point four million. Why uh, do you? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, all right. How much well, did they spend on it? I don't know. Probably like. Ten dollars. <laughs> so then they like made a lot of money. It's a hit. That's, that's how hits problem. work. That is how the it's math not. works. Oh my goodness. Uh, Disney what, spends what a billion dollars next, making a movie and makes movie? one million dollars. It is not a hit. <laughs> Fucking Spider Man made a billion dollars. That's a hit. Okay, that is a hit. But they didn't spend a billion dollars. I'm trying to find the the. Let's see. It doesn't tell me. I don't know why it's because it's a indie movie, but it doesn't tell me how much it costs. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. So, I I man, I I guess I didn't watch more Cobra Kai, so I can't know for sure. But you had me watch over the podcast. I I do understand it deals with it in a different way. It's also a series it has a lot more going for it it's also not trying to be a dark comedy I i'm get only i'm saying. only mostly i'm mostly fucking with you i i will say i it is dealing with the same subject matter in a completely different way yeah but i i can't say one is better than the other but it is very funny that it is so realistic i mean like i was telling darren the story and i think i told you i t- definitely told you before but like when i t- had like one or two lessons in karate in a public park by some guy that my dad knew and it was it was he had similar vibes he had similar vibes to this guy he ended up murdering a person he challenged them to a karate match to (laughs) he challenged them to a fight he challenged them to a fight he lost the fight the guy was a boxer he lost the fight got his ass kicked then went outside to his car and ran the guy over as he was leaving the club Mm -hmm. so who really won the fight marcus (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which also happens in this movie kind of <laughs> yeah, honestly very much so i will say when that speech happened at the end that was lexi did turn to me for the film and say oh that's the best part of this film oh god lexi come on that's that speech at the end okay so what happens next so basically, basically he joins the dojo uh-huh. he starts getting in there he's doing stuff he gets to yellow bell he takes it more seriously he doesn't go back to work he loses his job his whole eventually. personality ends up becoming this karate yeah. thing and the weird thing is like he's so into it like his sensei is like what what do you listen to and he's like soft rock and he's like no you listen to metal now <laughs> real men <laughs> listen to metal real men listen to metal and that's what you listen to now yeah and shit like that oh my god and the dog thing 
thing? The dog kind thing. Of, also, ridiculous. there's this running, I don't know if it's a joke or if it's something that is based on any kind of reality, but they're like, you need to learn to punch with your feet feet kick with your and f- kick with your hands no yes kick with, kick your, with fists. your fists punch with your feet. punch with your legs your feet and it was but, so yeah. funny and then it comes back later because the someone he a teacher ends up sending that someone from the dojo to kill his dog and the doctor and this is how you know right because the doctor's like it's the strangest thing <laughs> I saw I saw a footprint but it's as if somebody punched him with a foot <laughs> he's like I don't know how that's possible <laughs> it's just so funny and you're in there as the audience going oh my god <laughs> but it's also so funny because movies do that shit all the time it's like oh the strangest yeah. thing but this one clue you needed to pin it to the person that you think it was so fucking and great. it's like purposely like stupid <laughs> yeah 100 like, it's like the stupidest thing but it's like it knows it is so i'm like yeah man that's yeah, funny a lot of the dark humor in the movie comes from how deadpan they sell everything like no one yeah. is playing anything for a laugh no one in the world believes that anything going on is a joke i mean three yeah. people are murdered in this movie right or more i don't remember what the death count was i don't know a whole bunch i don't know i feel like though the movie for me was lacking any kind of like i don't know i don't i, I don't i feel like i don't need sincerity in every movie i really don't i feel like we've talked about movies where i'm like yeah this had no sincerity i fucking loved it it was great uh-huh. but i was like i I, I just kept like waiting for like Casey to do something good or Anna to do something good or like or like bad but made sense like character wise but like everybody acts so strange like you know that um th- that feeling of satisfaction when you're watching a movie and you know what's going to happen and you're right mm-hmm. that's why like a blockbuster is a bl- that's why Fast and the Furious are so popular right because you know what's going to happen and that's what gets the audiences going. I don't need huh. that all the time. But when you're so far away from that, you were crazy. Like, I don't I some I'm familiarity just, uh, with the movie yes, structure. Some familiarity. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'm I'm like craving some familiarity to like the three-part structure of a, like a character finding himself and becoming better for it. But everyone mm-hmm. just gets weirder and weirder and more obtuse. And I'm just over here like, yeah. what? I I was going to say that I love this movie because of how weird it was, because of how like strange it was. It made me feel lost. And while finding out that the person who like robbed him in the beginning or the people that robbed him in the beginning were a part of the karate dojo, like I felt like that was pretty obvious from the beginning of the movie. But like there were still twists and turns within that context that felt like well, yeah. I didn't expect that, you know? Even yeah. like minor jokes, you know, like when he's when when there's this shot of him after he starts karate and gets his yellow belt, when he's leaning back in his chair's work, looking at porn and listening to heavy metal. It was just like, I did not expect that to be the next shot I saw. And it was so funny and effective. I, I, I feel like when that happened, I literally laughed like, <laughs> like I yeah, laughed like, right. Here's the thing there. Those aren't the what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Every well, the, what you're describing. I actually liked. I liked those surprises. You know, and what Lexi said in the chat is also true. Like, it is kind of predictable. Like, a- as Lexi was watching the beginning of the movie, she's like, oh, so he killed the Grandmaster? Got it. <laughs> and I was like, well, all right, probably. But, like, th- that's not what I mean. I- I- it's hard for me to, like, figure out what I'm meaning because... But, but it's not... A- yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. But while you think, I will say this, that, like the it's not a it's not a mystery thriller movie where like guessing the end of the movie it's like oh i knew what was gonna happen so it took it away from me you know i feel like a lot of the jokes are what mainly i didn't see coming a lot of the gags agreed a lot of times i'm sitting there watching a comedy movie and i'm like i know exactly what joke they're gonna make i know exactly what they're gonna say next i it's movies become so predictable that you get not only story beats but fucking you know what lines they're gonna say next and at least this with the jokes, I was like unexpected, caught me off guard a lot of times. I feel like what would have would have worked for me is if there was somebody or something about the film that wasn't obtuse. Like, what if everything about the, the, the film was exactly the same, mm-hmm. except Anna was a little more like me, you know, and was my like viewpoint into the but thing. Then I think or, when, or like somebody, when you, somebody when you do that, somewhere then you're in an alien world. You know what I mean? Like if if a normal person existed in this movie, uh, they always, would be the always. main character because they would be the only normal person we could relate to. That's and true. Then, Why would Anna be there if she wasn't this person? Right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Maybe that's not the answer. I, I was missing something, though, right? 
right? I was mm-hmm. missing some kind of like c- connection or empathy drive That's or like fine. empathy driver. But everything you're saying, I did like. I I, I did those those uh, obtuse jokes were were funny. I I, I mean, I, I, if, I at the, I, if at I, the I end of this laugh. you're like, it was a well made movie, I didn't like. That's fine. I totally understand that. But like, I because f- I feel that way about movies. It just because I didn't like something oh, yeah. doesn't make it bad. Doesn't make it good. Totally, just totally. Whatever. The, the, the some of the craftsmanship for this movie is like very apparent. Like mm-hmm. some of the shots and some of the the takes were like, wow, that was really good. Yeah, I really enjoyed. Really that. well thought out filmmaking yeah. from the fact that he's not like doesn't have this huge list of movies that he's done like i was impressed yeah, question the tapes of all the people being attacked they called it faces of fist yes is that a play on faces, I think it was of, faces death. of death yeah, yeah what, what is that R- remind me what that is faces of death was similar to what without incriminating in yourself <laughs> faces of death i mean i've watched it. i don't know but it's a series of like i don't want to say they were illegal but it was videos of people dying just all cut together by someone it was in the early days of like vhs and dvd and stuff like that and so it was spreading around same thing with like hobo fights or something like that that was another one that was big that was going around so people there were films like this that were around at the time yeah yeah so he sells them and then he also blackmailed here's my thing about this film that i really wasn't expecting i really wasn't expecting this to be so apparent from the very beginning that this was a cult movie a cult i'm I'm sorry is that surprise you let me let me let me go down the list co- hold on hold on movie no 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 most of these things are cults i mean like this is no 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 this is let me go through the list it is straight up this is straight up no 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 this is straight up nexium this is straight up Nexium. Okay. Nexium. What was next? What did Nexium do? Made you pay for levels. Uh huh. Made you want to get into the exclusive uh-huh. classes. Had a kind of ribbon sash system to get through the levels. Made them really, really like hoity toity and like really prestigious when you get to them. Found blackmail. Made you eventually become the people that did this gag on other people. It is. This movie was straight up fucking Nexium, dude. Hell yeah. It was. You're right. It is definitely I was cultish. not surprised. It was I, I was not expecting this to be a cult movie. I, <laughs> I, I was I just so that, surprised. I think you gave me another cult thing. thing. <laughs> it is it is sort of like I didn't even notice that. But like it, that's a good point that this thing feels like a cult. And I think that's so realistic to yeah. things that people do in groups. Right. Like we yeah. as people, for some reason, form hierarchies. Yeah. in random fucking things that we do improv, and we just decide crossfit. that we care so much about them i mean yeah, yeah you're dealing with improv i'm sure that has culty like aspects 100%. as well yeah I, i've never been branded but <laughs> but there's still time and i've never killed a man also still but, time but i think I, I was i was funny when <laughs> when he thinks he killed that first guy and the guy pulls out the camera and he's like what are you doing and he's like i'm just filming he's just casual was like i filmed it and i was like ah oh, blackmail next year got it got it got it got it got it scientology got it got it got it got it, got it. blackmail got just it, got filming it, got it. it i got it in my face i also i really enjoy the way that things unravel in the movie like it, it feels like he's diving too deep into this thing as people do with like trauma or like pain in any way where they dive in too deep into the cult or whatever it is that they're trying to go to or or anything right physical yeah. fitness a new relationship gaming yeah literally anything yeah. people use whatever that first thing after trauma is to numb themselves to give themselves purpose mm-hmm. to give themselves strive and you get obsessed sometimes yeah. it ends up being healthy and it's what like makes you become a better person but some, most of the time it's like deeply unhealthy the yeah. relationship you have with it. even when it's a good thing like exercise right yeah you know you can exercise too much or be too obsessed 100%, with it a hundred percent everyone's seen that full house episode r.i.p bob saget oh remember dj was on the bike like yep. two, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah 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 come on come on classic <laughs> classic but that being said <laughs> you're right you're absolutely right about that what else what next what do you want to talk about next no i was just gonna say that the pacing of the movie the way things unraveled like afterwards was really mm-hmm. nice i i thought it was really fun how it ramped up he joined the thing like that was good pacing and then you see his life in the world of karate and then in the last 40 minutes of the movie shit just starts to go down he almost murders that guy the his dog is killed he confronts his master you know i will say i disagree with you only because i think you're describing the last like 20 minutes of the movie well before that i would say it is a little too slow i know why it's slow dark 
weird comedies like this are usually slow but like in a wes anderson movie the reason that being so slow is fine is is because i'm brought to this almost fantasy world and i'm looking at all these pretty colors and i'm looking at these cool landscapes or something this it felt like it languished a lot on lots of different moments where Fair. i was like I, I i get it go to the thing <laughs> Get to the thing. I I, the I, thing. I watched it this for the second time in two halves. So that's how I do know mm. that things picked up in the 40 minute mark because <laughs> I literally stopped and I was like, I know we, we know what's going to happen next. He's going to almost murder this guy in the parking lot. So let's pause it and then continue the next day. But yeah, no, it's it, I could see with the whole world. Lexi being, literally said, like, is this movie three hours as we we're like an hour in with the movie? I was like, being oh, sorry. So <laughs> jarring. I could see people like maybe thinking or like when you are uncomfortable in a space, you become more aware of the time that is passing. And so I think if you are uncomfortable watching this movie, you feel out of sorts. Everyone feels like they have alien personalities around you. I could see this movie feeling yep. long. Yeah, that's that's exactly why it was that mm -hmm. way. And it's not, it's not even a knock to the movie. I think it's just not for me is all is all I really mean. You know, I, I, I just need. Yeah, I I would want things to not languish quite as much. Yeah, like, it, it, I think I think it's, the thing about comedies for me is I, I don't like long, long comedies anymore. Like I miss the time of the 22 minute comedy. Like, mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's why uh, I've been watching Abbott Elementary. That's been really good. I watched the first couple episodes of How I Met Your Father. Not yeah. great, but honestly, really nice that we're out of there in 22 minutes. <laughs> you Fair know enough. what i mean it, it's a really big pro for the show yeah because <laughs> it's like i mean that's why the office is like boom 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 in out mm -hmm. joke but done yeah you know I mean, i've been watching always sunny again and always sunny is like quick funny yeah. done yeah well was, uh, movies it's larger to sustain that but yeah yeah i also i feel like with this movie i know it's long and it probably doesn't help my point that i did watch it in two chunks but i i <laughs> like at least upon the first viewing i was so intrigued by everything that was going around like i was just like what the hell is going on where where am i in the world what time yeah. am i in it took me i was like okay, okay i guess established i guess we're in the 90s ish like there's just a lot of it that was jarring oh, i didn't even get that i guess it could have been the 90s huh? but people i could see instead of being thought, intrigued by that being put off by yeah. it i thought homeboy just didn't own a cell phone i didn't know what was going on no it was like the 90s so, for sure because everyone right. had like a vcr and all this shit you're right so let's uh let's get to the ending no yeah sure so you find out after casey breaks in he finds the morgue and the incinerator he finds out he's blackmailing all his older students and making these tapes and then he decides that he needs to kill the the sensei he talks to anna as he's about to go on the attack it's so strange where it's just like here put on this hoodie now you're going to be the the one of these motorcycle people without even like having talked about it nope like just no and it's like hey and you're doing it now which is very cold like yeah, yeah. which he is very cold like you just start doing yes. the thing yeah he also did say like you knew you know what i mean like he says that yeah. to him at one point it's like you knew there's no way you yeah. did it yeah and so they do one of those hits to try to get someone to join the dojo it ends up being a cop they kill the cop he takes anna home and they're like this is enough you find out anna's backstory mm -hmm. about how which she I, killed a guy yeah I mean, that was a good earlier, scene. someone that was jokes a good that you get a red stripe from killing someone. He's like, ah, no, it's for instructors. But then it out, turns no, it's out real. it's real. He, you yeah. do get a red stripe. Yeah, from you find somebody. out that the one guy wanted to kill him and like Anna saved his life. Yes, Anna saves Jesse Eisenberg's life. And it's and then now he realizes he has to kill that. He has to try to kill the sunset. Mm -hmm. He before, kills a sorry, cop before, too? Yeah. Before we get to that, I do. I really, really thought it was it was really funny how Casey's character went and bought belts for everyone so what a good because he joke. wanted to wear his yellow belt uh -huh. all the time yeah and then he made confidence. a whole he had to make 50 so he made mm -hmm. one for every color and then he handed the he added the sensei a, a black belt good now i can wear my black belt and let everyone know that i am a black belt yeah, it was ridiculous. I love my brown belt. Mm -hmm. it makes me feel like I wore my what? That was ridiculous. It was so, so we get funny. to so the one of the one of the guys who ended up getting kicked out of the cult hangs himself, and that was mm -hmm. like one of the last straws. Yeah, because I think Casey probably blames himself a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And then he confronts the sensei. Has this really great speech about mm -hmm. how he probably killed Grandmaster and how you know he's going to kill him and yeah they're gonna fight to the death and i love the sensei's reaction where he's like you're gonna fight me to the death i'm better at fighting than you. Yeah. it's so matter of fact he's like just genuinely confused yeah, it's like i'm better at fighting than you. okay i accept and and the shot pans out so you see the the sword in the background so you yep. know shit's about to go down yep. you're like ready the music swells yeah and then pop pop shoots him in the face i love how jarring and sudden that was, that was great it that was, was great. so funny like we all knew he had a gun we just like 
I didn't. I forgot about it. I forgot about I it entirely. I thought he never got it. Yeah, because he had karate. Know. That's totally something know. that's believable. Yeah, but he got it, and there he was with... <laughs> With a with a, with a dead, yep. dead, and then what happened next? I honestly really didn't expect. I thought the movie was going to end there. Yeah, but instead, what does Jesse do? What does Casey so, do? So Casey rubs his finger in the blood <laughs> and claims to have killed the master with the same technique that the grandmaster or killed Sensei with the same technique the grandmaster knew about the one finger punch of death or whatever or exploding finger. I don't know what the fuck it was. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. he says that that's what he did. <laughs> he just has to honor that that's the truth and then also a nice little wrap-up scene where he like gives anna the belt and it six his dog on the guy who killed and his he six the guy yes six his dog on the guy that killed his dog yeah and that's that's the movie that's the movie i had <laughs> I had so much fun with this movie, Nick. I mean, just I do feel like with this being this sort of movie, like I said, I know it's not exactly Wes Anderson, but it had that sort of like indie comedy vibe yeah. where the jokes are sort of like it was like ha- one part off a little bit drinking buddies and one part Wes Anderson. It was like in between the two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear that. But Marcus, as you told me you were doing this movie, I was like, oh, well, you watched the other 2019 Jesse Eisberg image and puts movie, haven't you? And you're like, no. And I said, can you watch it for the podcast? And you said, sure. So you also watched Vivarium. Yes. Which we don't I usually did. get to do. This is a movie neither of us challenged, but we watched it. And yeah. I want to talk about it at least a little bit. OK, Marcus, what is a Vivarium? <laughs> Vivarium is a weird ass movie that I thought was a lot of fun. Yeah. That's fun. I I did. I liked it less than Art of Self Defense for sure. Nah, Lexi liked it more. Well, hold on. It's funny what? because as Lexi's watching the movie, she's like, "This movie's so much better than Art of Self Defense. It's so much better." And then by the time she got to the end, she's like, "Wait a second. Is none of this gonna matter? Are they all just gonna die?" <laughs> I hate this movie. I hate this movie more. This movie sucked. This movie's the worst movie. <laughs> oh, uh, Rodan Boss in the chat just shouting us out. Thank you so much for the get the subs. We love you too, man. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so but, much. Appreciate it. But Marcus, what uh, what do you think of Vivarium? Uh, what or what's it about? Okay. Give me the quick, Vivarium. Quick, 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 I'll quick give you a quick synopsis. Basically, what happens yeah. is this this young Very couple easy. walks into a real estate agency, mm-hmm. and because they're looking to purchase a home, they met they're met by this really creepy weird guy. Back to my point about ours to self defense. If everyone's not weird, the weird people stand out a lot, and this guy stands out because he's fucking weird as shit, and something's off. I like it. He takes them to go see a house. In the you, what were you thinking at that moment right at the beginning where you're like i was like this guy's an alien or some kind of monster like something's fucking wrong with this man so you were in it so you're yeah, like 100%. yeah this guy's like an yeah, alien or like, some shit. let's do it aliens <laughs> fine <laughs> yeah. um so then they they, they he takes them to the suburb every all the houses are the same it's it looks so like cat in the hat it looks like cat in the hat that's exactly someone else said that when i was watching it okay. anyway but it looks exactly like all the clouds are cloud shaped which yeah. is scary and weird like they're looking. painted on yep yeah and so then they get into this house he shows them around the house and like okay maybe the house isn't for us then he disappears and the rest of the movie is them stuck in that house in this fucking suburb love it and it was wild it was a fun crazy ride loved it it's a good kind of like random movie to watch i feel like you know back in the day you used to sit at home on a saturday and you were bored and we didn't have streaming services so you just watch whatever was on tv and you end up watching a weird movie that's what this feels like like if you have time to watch a movie that you just i'm like i need something to watch and i want it to be like weird weird i would watch the movie yeah 100 i love how jesse eisenberg's character is just like fuck this shit and just burns the thing down like after being there one day <laughs> yes and it doesn't even fucking work he doesn't even consult his wife in any nope. way no just, nope honestly um, marcus i would do the exact same thing i was every time he did anything i was like yep same yeah i would do the same thing this movie i felt was a little heavy-handed with the like just like the cuckoo bird taking over the nest the aliens are gonna come and force and take over the nest and force you guys to raise their children it's like okay yes we got it yes thank you nature's cruel got it cool thanks but the whole movie's about i know and then and then what's dropped at their doorstep a baby a child that uh, grows abnormally fast that they have to take care of and mm-hmm. that's in, in the movie is just their slow descent yeah i uh, the, one of the reasons why i really like this movie i, I don't love it or anything like it's, i think it's a solid b you mm-hmm. know maybe c but solid b i think is is just the two actors are so are trying to be so normal mm-hmm. but they're both actually weird actors but they're trying so hard to be just normal people yeah but they are slowly losing their goddamn mind i agree in such a real honest 
like accurate like fucking sincere way Mm -hmm. where it's like none of it seems over the top it seems like super like reasonable everything they do like when jesse eisenberg finally has had enough and throws the kid and locks him in the car you know super relatable but Mm -hmm. then when imogen puts his like stockholm syndrome and won't let him do it super like reasonable super like i get it you know yeah yeah no you're absolutely right i think that the movie was fun i had a good time with it these sort of like fifth dimension aliens were like they travel on a different axis than we can even perceive and that's how they're able to like sort of teleport you know that's what i got from it at least like yeah i thought it was a different a different different dimension different wavelength i was thinking the same thing fifth dimension is a good way of saying it yes so they just like travel between like whatever dimensions. So I like that sequence too, where she was traveling between because she nice. follows him under the like street. Yeah. It goes through I, his dimension. Yeah. I like the progression of the characters. I thought it was really interesting. Which you, is, uh, uh, James, I, is oh this 50 my goodness. more subs. Uh, you can't. All right. Well, um, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you to our community now that has just been gifted 50 more subs. What, how many more subs? Well, no, I, I think I think after it's all our followers, I don't think I think it oh, goes okay. out to the random like friends of friends. Oh, OK, uh, well, because I'm pretty sure I'm Shady Penguin isn't following us and he just got gifted a tier one. Yeah, sub. let's go. Shady <laughs> Penguin. You can come watch us anytime. But Vivarium. Yeah. I, it was weird a right it was i just, just i needed movie, man yeah i yeah I, I don't think i would watch you're it glad again. you watched it though right i'm glad i watched it i would recommend yeah. it to some people but i don't think yeah. i would watch it again uh, i i agree i think i really like movies that are sci-fi and weird but follow a simple like this is a very tropey th- thriller movie mm-hmm. right it, it yeah. just follows those beats it's doing its one weird thing in a very predictable movie but like it's doing it well right I like agree. I respect a movie like that. I respect a movie yeah. that's like I, I, we know what we're doing. We're not trying to because if they tried to reinvent the wheel too much in this movie, it would have lost something. It got too uh-huh. complicated, right? Yeah. Like it was already so out there, and we had to accept so many. Th- it just asked us to accept like this one thing, like this yeah. one the world, while yeah. everything else was normal. While the art of self defense wants me to accept that nothing is normal, and it pissed me off the whole entire film. <laughs> okay, there. I. it's so funny doing this podcast with you and learning like what you can handle or what you like. And it's just like, I feel like sometimes it like Nick likes, you can have like one or two I'm weird things, but if the yeah. whole movie's weird, it's a no-go. Yeah, I mean, I like weird things. Moulin Rouge is weird, right? Just the, uh, amount of, the right amount of weird. You like that movie. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. weird of a movie. It's a little weird. It's an avant-garde. It's a musical. Thing. It's very musical theater. It's not that weird. Uh, whatever. I'm literally about to look at our old episodes to see if I ever liked anything No, weird. Psycho Gorman, you didn't like that one. I'm sure Psycho you liked Mormon's an awful movie. I'm sure you liked weird. No, it's not. It's like Gorman was great. You're crazy. Oh, oh yeah. You like oh, man, Rob, thank you so much. I loved a lobster. I love uh, sacred killing okay. of a killing of a sacred deer. I do like weird movies. It's just it has to like, you yeah, know, what? I don't lobster, understand the difference lobster, between this and like killing of a sacred lobster deer. is a gr- lobster is a great example, right? Because lobster is also in a weird Wes Anderson. People are talking weird mm-hmm. off coof thing but but and i don't have an answer yet i'm literally talking through it with you right now <laughs> okay why did that Let's work for out. me but this did not work for me i'll be your therapist i think i think like, well how do you how did I the think, movie make you feel <laughs> i think this movie pissed me off because everyone feels so dumb the lobster everyone's equally dumb but i like bought it why did you buy it in the lobster but not in art of self-defense i think it's because you, you know were what? still I know set is, in I know the real is. world that's not why what <laughs> that's in, not why in the that's art of self-defense you're set in that's america not why. and in that's the other why. movie why. you're in a like a post-apocalyptic world <laughs> that's not why I, I this is why i think i'm just me guessing okay in the lobster people are weird but they're not like devoid of feelings in this movie i don't get like love i don't get compassion i don't get happiness i i barely even get fear or anger because it's so like this weird like like it's this weird confined like thing whereas like in lobster they're saying it weirdly but it's like no i really love that person that person holds my whole entire heart i wish and this thing is just like if someone nobody mentioned love one time in this whole goddamn movie oh like, that's the big like, problem for Nick. That's not what, that's no, not what, I, love I don't need love I, I need love in every movie if there's no love i riot Vivarium, they loved each other. You're right. Uh, Darren just said, I feel like that's exactly why the Dash and uh, Dash is that the dog? Yeah, the dog. I, don't, I can't pronounce that. Mm-hmm. I can't pronounce that dog thing. <laughs> part of the movie. Probably, exactly. It's true. I, I, honestly, he loves the honestly, dog. Marcus, if the dog was in this movie 15% more, I might have loved this movie. <laughs> Shut up. Well, the, the dog was there. 
yeah. for like a couple jokes and then it died and then it was sad uh-huh. but if the dog was there like even more and like that was my connection to like knowing they had feelings mm-hmm. honestly it yeah. would have worked for me more i i get that but the dog make making a good point in the check dog was the only thing that overcame the karate brainwashing so it helped him escape the cult yeah well the dog was the only thing that the dog didn't overcome the brainwashing right because the dog fought no, back the dog helped him overcome the brainwashing because he killed this sensei because his dog oh was that's murdered. what you mean yeah sure yeah yeah, yeah. you're mm-hmm. right i don't know i think i think that's why though because i do like i like Wes Anderson movies i do like lobster and uh, thank you for bringing up lobster old man ram i i do love lobster i did like i did really like sacred killing killing of a sacred deer that was a weird fucking movie, dude. At the end, he spins around in a circle and tries to shoot one of the kids or something like. Oh, yeah. That wow. Worked. What a weird that movie. That was the same vibe as Art of Self-Defense. B- but but I like the end of this movie. Oh, OK. That's the great. ending I like. It was just yeah. the journey I did. <laughs> <laughs> but, I like but, the but that being I said the journey that being said i think there's a lot of really funny parts i think it's well acted i did like swiss army man another movie that's very weird swiss army man was really old man rob you get me old man rob <laughs> stop having his back what are you doing man <laughs> i thought we had a thing here <laughs> but i i think i just i was missing that thing and i, and I keep describing it and I'm, I'm not quite nailing it but yeah. i think you know what i mean like I, i'm just missing that one i think my connection right i yeah. i i need that one thing that one thing that lets me get in there and mm-hmm. then everything else can be weird everything else could be off the wall sure but i need that one thing you need you a know? hook yeah and for the lobster it was love for sacred killing of a family it was family for swiss army man it was loneliness <laughs> it was death and being stranded on an island we uh-huh. are all, all very familiar with that i get that i i could yeah. understand that did you see that daniel radcliffe is going to be weird al yankovic in the i movie? did yeah i weird. don't care i have no opinion on it weird well my uh white comedy friend really cared you know that made me care even less it seems like the group of people who cares yeah yeah white and i was like uh, uh, I, my my point was literally like i don't give a shit about weird al he's like oh i don't really care about him so much i just know everything he does i saw his concert and i was like yeah you care about <laughs> he's like your people's like fucking john luig i get it like go have at it it's fine <laughs> whatever have a good time bud see ya <laughs> Uh, fully coolly i thought i liked you psycho gorban was trash no fully coolly you're a genius and you're much better than old man rom uh <laughs> i like psycho gorban a little bit but it was it wasn't it for me it wasn't it for I, me at that one i could understand you not liking this one sure i i thought you would come around more i honestly marcus you've made me come around a lot yeah <laughs> I, I would i'm just describing- trying to watch it again I'm describing to you why it's not my favorite movie, not why I didn't yeah. like it. Oh, you know, fair enough. Fair there's, enough. A, there's a but, but the only real way to know, Marcus, is to get to those questions. Yes, that's true, Nick. Okay, towards the end of the episode, we ask these three questions. We have not seen watched Vicious, Vicious Fun. Fun. Ooh, I, what it is. I would watch. If that. you join our Patreon, you can suggest it, and maybe it'll get voted on by the fans, and we can watch. It. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I am okay. looking it up now, Nick. Oh, it's got those people. very important questions. Did you like the movie? I guess I have to say no if I'm being like super honest. Okay. But I didn't hate it. I I, I didn't. I'm glad I watched it. You know, mm-hmm. like I had a fun time hating on some of it and enjoying some of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So yeah. 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 I, I liked it. I liked it. I liked okay. it. Okay. Okay. There you go. There you go. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Okay. I liked hating it, but I guess that counts. that's part of liking it. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, would you recommend this movie? Gosh, no. Mm, Not to okay. anybody. <laughs> I don't have to think okay. Like there's just like the people who get this, I feel like could, could get it somewhere else and the people who won't get it, there's no reason to subjugate them to this kind of thing. That's fair. That's okay. all I have to say about it. Nick, would you watch another movie by this director? Not if you didn't make me. <laughs> Not if you didn't make me, no. Oh no. What if I had an actress you really liked? Haley Who Steinfeld. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. First day. First <laughs> time. Go. First day. I'm I there. Knew I'm if it had someone you liked, Julia Roberts. If it had someone you liked, in. I'm in. I'm in. in. Oh, Julia Roberts in one of these kind of films, yeah. she would kill it, dude. She would. She kill just it. oozes charisma, dude. 100. percent Oh, I want to see Julia Roberts in this movie now. She would crush it. <laughs> Imagine Jesse Eisenberg played by Julia Roberts. Come I on. would love this movie if that, that was. That would the be case. dope. This that would, would be, be my dope. favorite movie of all time. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing not to love yeah perfect movie all right marcus thank you so much for giving me the art of self-defense yeah. guys next week usually we would say what the challenge is but we already know what it is because the patreon poll has been done and won the legend of vox machina the critical role amazon prime animated show the first three episodes 
are what we are going to be reviewing next week. And we are doing that on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard mm-hmm. Time, because I am going to see Hades Town next Thursday. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, we, two, is that two Thursdays missed because of Hades Town? Hades Town has been ruining this oh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> oh, I do want to say I missed this in the chat. Uh, Rodan Boss said Nick only loves rom coms immediately, but he drove me to an ups- upsetting event and played Love Actually just to put me up. That's true. We were driving to a wedding, and I was his plus one, uh-huh. so it wasn't like you know we we're gonna have a good time. But it, yeah, but I made him watch Love Actually on the car on the way there. We finished in the parking lot before we went in. Oh, no. <laughs> it was great. Oh, that's fun. Love Actually, fantastic. Okay. Guys, you can get at us everywhere at Now Try This Cast. Join our Patreon, patreon.com slash Now Try This Cast. You can go to our website, Now Try This Cast.com to find everything where we're at. And you can leave us five star reviews on Spotify now and on iTunes. Thank you so much. Beautiful stuff. Thank you to all of you who joined the ta- chat. Thank you to all thank of you. you who are listening and made it this far. We love you guys and good night. And thank you to all our new subscribers. Gifted yeah, by Ron- let's go. Ron- <laughs> good night. Friends get together so they can try things. How about a dance podcast so that you can try things? Now we will stop singing so that we can all now try this. Now try this trivia. Now try this trivia. Now trivia. Now trivia. Now trivia this. Okay, Nick. This game is yes. very quick, very simple. Yes. Like I said earlier, Detroit Urban Survival Training has been sweeping TikTok with Is this as racist as I think it is? No. It's it's okay. it's very memeable. And so Nick, I'm going to okay. play a little bit of it on the Twitch stream. I'm going to try it if the technology works and okay. you have to guess what happens next. Okay. That's it. That's all you got. Okay. So All right. I, let's so see. I, I will watch this clip and then tell you what the next part of it is. Yep. Well, yeah, I'm going to pause it at a certain point and then you're going to tell me. Oh, hopefully I can pause it. And then you're going to tell me what the next part of it is. Are you showing me TikToks? Yep. Okay. Do you have the, the users who oh, it's TikTok? playing? It's playing. Can I pause Detroit it? Detroit Urban Spectrum Training. We're going to share with you right now what's your cell phone you cell to defend phone. yourself what? if someone to grab you. They grab your super watch, like in this case, a really super watch. Can I pause it? You nope. take the corner of your phone. Close your eyes. Uh, the bones of the hand right here. Press in to your hand. It's you? extremely painful. Oh, I if they try to walk it. close to you, take your phone, press right in the chest plate oh, right here. Oh, it up and down, it will make them back oh. away from you. Now that you can use it for, you go right looking? here to the, to the bridge of the no, nose and it'll back them up. Okay, we're going to try this Sh- again. You want to share your looping. screen? Instead? I'm going to try to stream right Detroit Urban Survival Training. We're going to share with you right now what to do with your cell phone <laughs> to defend yourself if someone to grab you. They grab your super watch, like in this case, a really super watch. You okay. take the corner of all your right, phone so a couple right to the bones of the hand right here, here press uh, in to your hand, and it's extremely painful. We have all these viewers. They try to walk close to you. Take your phone, press right in the chest plate right here. Up and down, it will make them back away from you. Now that you can use it for, you go right here to the to the bridge oh, of the nose well, uh, and it'll back oh, yes, them up. This is the bear hug. I don't know what's going on. Take your phone right from the top of the skull, I press down, go back away from you. Do I need to hear it? Should I unmute it? These are some simple ways you can use your cell phone to defend yourself if someone okay. were to grab you. I'm I'm I don't understand. The guy is showing me how to use a cell phone to disarm somebody, but I don't understand why the phone isn't stronger than his like karate chopped hand or his fist. Darren said you can probably for the rest of them just read the question and watch the videos after the questions. Oh wow. What do you <laughs> Oh you're back. You are back, Marcus. You are back. You are so funny. Look at that. Look at that awesome overlay we have. Oh, they still can't hear you? Oh my goodness. Uh, Darren said the bit vi- the video is for us, Nick, and we don't have karate fists. <laughs> no, I mean this isn't okay. As hard as my back this is. Is my is audio it? back? Oh, actually, actually, I just said that. I don't. I can't tell. Hello, 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 hello. Okay, great. My audio is back. Wow, sorry about that. That sucked ass. <laughs> Rodman said, "Hard point made to resist breaking. It's always in people's hands. Help small people, weaker people." Wait, what's weaker and smaller? You're back, but out of sync, it says. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 I just watched. You're good. You're I'm good. good. Okay, great. Yeah. Maybe it's I have to redo everything. I accidentally somehow. Oh, I made it. Okay. I made folders in OBS of like you and me. I deleted my whole folder. So I just completely disappeared from the podcast entirely. Well, I'm going to cut all that out. Okay, good. Oh, it, so it says it looks a bit off your audio, but can't, whatever. I can't. I, there's nothing I can do about it right now. Okay, well, we'll I'll add all that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yay! Nailed it. Okay. So, is there another way for us to play this game or no? Mm, no, I don't think so. Hold on. Let me try one more thing. 
I just fucked okay. up everything. Let me try one more thing. DLC media sauce. <laughs> You're still all for fully coolly, but they said it's totally fine if they just don't stop watching your mouth for completely <laughs> reasonable reasons. Uh, listen, I'll, I'll I get like it. This. I'll talk like guys. This no, no, no. Episode. Don't do that. I get it, Marcus. You are the sexy one. I watch your lips all the time. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but you have very open oval sounds so you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome i'm bro. i'm happy i could have a very open oval sounds for you baby <laughs> Marcus. i can't get this to work i tried i'm sorry there's no pause so it fucks it up you can't screen share or do so i mean without you can't within the middle of doing it you'd have to re yep yep do it. yeah wait. i mean i could okay. screen share with you but it would just be you wouldn't miss the audio or something whatever let's try do, do you want me to do you want to give me the video and i screen share and pause it and do that that seems like a lot. Hold on. Yeah, you're right. It seems like a that lot. Seems like a lot. That seems like a lot. That seems like a lot. Never mind. Well, Darren says you can show the video after asking the question. Okay, that's fair enough. I guess you don't need to pause in the middle. Okay. Darren, our producer is 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 editing okay. you right now live. On There's Saturday. okay. In the, okay, here you go. <laughs> the next one is a video of a little girl. What is she here to teach us, Nick? <laughs> I can't right play. You. Totally work. What is she here to teach us? What is the little girl going to teach us, Nick? Oh, best game ever. <laughs> <laughs> this little girl. What would a little girl, an urban little girl, she's going to teach me how to use her science books to take down somebody. Science? Yeah, like her big. Have you seen textbooks from kids, dude? They're huge. Those yeah, you're right. They're giant. They're huge. They're weapons. Certifiable. Certifiable. I, that's funny. Uh, Can you okay. not play it? She's going to use science? Yep, I'm playing yeah. it now. It's going. Detroit going. is supposed to have a treaty. And you're here. I'm going to show you what to do if you got separated from your family or you feel afraid. This is a safety alarm. If you're feeling scared, pull it like this. When you pull the alarm, an adult will come and help you. You can buy these alarms on our website. Thank you for the support. What What do you think, Nick? Oh my goodness! First of all, uh-huh. the girl's adorable. Yeah, she is adorable. Second of all, those hateful parents making her do this shit. Unless she <laughs> loves doing it. But Unless what she if doing it? What if the Detroit Survival Guide guy is her dad? What is? How does that make it better? It doesn't. It doesn't make it better. It just makes the context make fucking more sense. Child, child labor laws, please. Hello, that's not true. I would fucking if I had a good idea to make a product, I'd fucking let my kid mm-hmm. chill for it. Hell yeah, hell, hell yeah. yeah. The parents are the parents are forcing dreams. their dreams of being viral on her. That's or true. that's true. Or she's a step ahead because she's already starting on that CV. What CV? Cover letter? No, CV. It's your CV is the list of all the things you've ever done. Oh, uh, why would you it's have like that? It's like your. List? You don't need that. Oh, as an you, actor. You need that as a professional too. No, you don't. CV. If it's far away enough, you don't need shit. What do you? You need it. You need it if you're like a computer programmer that does like tons of gigs and you have and you can't put all those on a resume. You mm-hmm. put like you work for Apple, mm-hmm. but then you put all the things on a CV. I don't. Need, mm-hmm. What are you talking? Sure. Get out of here. I don't need nah, to explain uh-huh. what a CV is. You fuck you. You know what a CV is. <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. What's the next Stop one? With me. Next one says. Okay, we're gonna watch. We're gonna. There's only five, so we have three more. Uh, how to escape okay. when someone is holding on, holding one of your wrists with both his hands, but completely. You punch it. Hold on. You punch him with your other hand. <laughs> he's holding both your he's holding both he's holding your one hand with both his hands. What yeah. do you do, Nick? His both of his hands are both preoccupied of his hands on your one are hand. On your one hand. Yep. You just use your other hand to punch him in the face. Nick, you're a genius. <laughs> because this man couldn't figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch the video. Okay. Detroit Urban Spell Training. Right now we're going to demonstrate it the double wrist grab. Uh, how the release works from the grab he's grabbing the wrist. But he's not going to let go unless he has to oh i'm going to try God. to get my hand to come out uh, he's grabbing balls, hard eyes balls and he's pointing with his I'm other hand, my hand. he's going to try to hold we come straight in the reason this works is because there's no muscle groups on top of the hand that can stop this the thumbs there's no muscle groups to stop that i'm lifting here pushing my elbow in it's going to come right <laughs> this is an intelligent option that can help you escape. You watch that the guy just let you go. Your will. The guy is letting go. go. He's not breaking out. The guy is letting listen, go. Listen, listen, Marcus. I'm just saying that might work. Nick, I That's knew all- it. I feel like you, you didn't know about this, but there's a part, like a small little part, the same part of my brain that likes wrestling. I was like, you could do that. That is like, you could do that. 
You can do that. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Come, come attack me. Come attack me right now. I can do that. Oh man. It's okay. like it's like when you when you like see a jump and you're like, I can jump that far. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Or someone makes something look easy. You're like, I could do that too. And you're like, no, you can't. You can't do that. Yeah, I can, I can do that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty amazing. Uh Nick, how do you dis how would you disarm uh an assailant from their gun? Or who has a gun? It's a, it, I mean, th- that really, th- that's a hard question. What's your it depends technique? how close they are. They're very close. Bit, they're very close? Yeah, they're very then close. Then you just, you, you literally can swat away and punch them in the face. Swat away the gun? Yeah. The gun? You, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nick! So, so your gun, hold on. So your gun is, this is gun guy in my face? Father? <laughs> it's like here? It's like right here? Yeah. It's like right here? Yeah. I, I, if I As I'm like this, I go, I would have shot you three <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, I'll do it again, I'll do it again. Slow mo. <laughs> it's, I got the gun and a punch. It's the, it's, it. it's the whip around for me. It's the whip around that does it. Oh. I was exaggerating, but it's just this. Boom. That Boom. doesn't work, impre- Nick. Can I be honest? You're it's right. Impressive. But that doesn't work. It's impressive. It's impressive when I fucking punch to this camera. It looks like you know what I'm doing. Like. Oh. <laughs> Right? Like the depth perception? Oh, <laughs> man, you seem so tough and cool. Okay, I'm playing the video. Okay. Detroit Urban Survival Training. We're back in Detroit with a street demo. Today we have a volunteer. Uh, are you from Detroit? Yeah. And look, it says Detroit in the background. This is real Detroit. So what we're going to do today is another demo. This is a gun disarm. Have I ever shown you before? Yeah, that's right. I've never seen it before. Okay, so all I'm going to try to do is try to make it so he can't shoot me. All you're going to do is shoot me if I try to grab the gun. Put it right in my chest like and don't move. I'm sorry, he's not a cop? No, he's just a cop. <laughs> the, dope dope. the reason he can't fire he is because we push the slide to the rear. This is the most that disengage the trigger so it cannot fire. And from here, same thing. So you don't move. And from here, we redirect and now you have the gun. Oh, Detroit Urban Survival Training it. sharing with you tactics that, that will save work. your life. But your spin move is gonna work. Yeah, a hundred percent. You're crazy. I started a podcast with a madman. Pull a gun on me. See what happens. <laughs> okay. Whilst uh, well, let's oh, see. Oh yeah, Run on Boston. He lives in Detroit. You think Chicago or NYC is still comparable? Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's fair. I, I, so there's one left, right? Yep, one left. What life saving tactic does Detroit US teach? U.S. training, whatever. What the fuck was this thing called again? Detroit. Anyway, Detroit Urban Survival Training. Jesus Christ. Dust. Okay. What does Dust teach Snoop Dogg to save him from the chance that someone will get past his bodyguards? Shut up. That he definitely has to point a gun at him. Fucking. It's Snoop Dogg. You don't think fucking Snoop Dogg's fucking loaded up? He taught him. Snoop Dogg is going to pull under his dashboard and pull out a fucking shotgun from nowhere. Yo, do you see Snoop Dogg? No! Snoop Dogg, pay attention! What Eminem, masterful technique Snoop Dogg, did Dust Eminem, teach? Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Dre, Kendrick, and Mary J. Blige are doing the halftime show this year. You know, that's great. That's cool. Yeah. You know what's also so cool? About it? This video. Okay. <laughs> Give me your money. I have no idea. Snoop Dogg? This is a Nick movie. A hundred percent. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He even wrote this. Uh, okay. Watch this. It's all thing to say then. And if I move, we'll pull the trigger. You, you hold the gun and you go, pa! Ah. No! Yeah. 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 You grab it and you go, pa! Yes. That's what I'm saying. You watch. Watch. Watch this. That's how you do this. No. I know karate, dude. Oh, my God. But what they say, that's not what I'm saying. Really? By the time they see your head, we'll pursue that. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> watching a dodge every time yeah. is the funniest shit to me. I absolutely love it. You crazy? <laughs> Damn. Ain't no special effects in here either. No, no. This, this is the real world right here. This is the real basketball. Yeah, there. When we get out of here, we don't do anything. That's what I'm learning. I can't. <laughs> no special effects. This is real time, real live action. Right? All right. Uh, Snoop Dogg. And it worked. Work. It's okay. too good to be back true. We get back to the <laughs> back to the episode. Sorry, that was just so much fun. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe this. I didn't know it would be one guy. That's why it's one. He's guy. not a cop. That's why I don't think so. I feel like it's illegal to look like a cop if you're 